So my name is Ryan, as you all mostly know. Um, I'm a health science senior. No, health science senior. I've been doing a project with Veronica Warch from the School of Public Health. Um, so the project is titled Studying Access to Medicines, Pharmaceutical Market Resources and Methods of Analysis. Basically, I looked at ways you can use market resources, specifically market reports, to study access to medicines and find ways to promote access to medicines, um, both in low middle income countries and high income countries. <laughs> So just some background, access to medicines is a global challenge, both in the United States where, un where unaffordability is a huge problem, and in many low and middle income countries where accessibility, there's a lot of places where there's medicines are just not available. There's, it's a huge challenge we need to work for. Access to medicines is on the agenda of many international organizations, including the Millennium Development Goals and the Sustainable Development Goals for the United, for United Nations, and with many initiatives through the World Health Organization. So there's many ways you can look at this problem. You can look at the patent policies, you can look at the politics and the supply chain, but one reason I think the market perspective is very important is because markets can and do operate everywhere. Look at New York City and the entire place is a market. But also market interventions have worked in um, community villages in Kyrgyzstan, very rural area, making community pharmacies compete to make medicines more available and more affordable. So market perspective is very valuable. Thus, to find ways to make access to medicines a reality, you need an understanding of pharmaceutical markets. So what did I do? The first objective was to identify commonly used and underutilized resources to study access to medicines. So this was looking at market reports, um, looking at um, resources provided by many international organizations. It wasn't a systematic review, but it looked at many articles and many um, other studies in the past, many organizations, what the resources were available that you could use to study it. Um, so from there, I took these resources that we identified and categorized them into three groups, market resources, trade resources, and public health resources. And then I assessed the strengths and limitations of each of these resources, kind of a big, long, annotated bibliography. Um, so from then, when I was looking at the market resources specifically, we saw there was many limitations to the content and quality of pharmaceutical market and industry reports in studying access to medicines. Um, so from there, we decided to develop and test a method of assessing the quality of pharmaceutical market and industry reports. For the rest of this presentation, I'll focus specifically on this objective and go more into detail. And then finally, after completing these, we compiled a manual for public health professionals that were interested in access to medicines, either in developing policies and understanding their local um, problems or on a more global, um, bigger scale for research, um, help them guide on the resources they could use as well as how to assess the quality. So just the methods of developing this assessment tool. First, we search for other assessment instruments, either looking at the scientific quality, um, measures of scientific rigor. We looked at market research manuals to see what important outputs there were for market research studies. Um, surprisingly, we didn't find any other measures of how to measure the quality of pharmaceutical market industry reports or market reports at all. Um, so we had to develop a lot on our own. We also reused access to medicines literature and market literature to see what important outputs there were, to see what was really important both to include and what was important um, for researchers, what they really needed. So then we consulted with, after we comp um, completed a first draft of the tool, we consulted with experts at the School of Public Health, have them review our, both our criteria and our scoring mechanism, and then updated the tool. After we had our final version, we conducted a pilot study um, using four different marker reports. Just a little background, since I've used the word market report a lot, what are they? They're the output of market research studies, in which market research studies study simply what the way the market works, who the key players are, what the um, main uh, mechanisms in the market are, like who, what the supply is, what the demand is, um, what political and economic factors in the local environment are really important. So all these were specifically either pharmaceutical or pharmaceutical reports, so looking at the healthcare, life sciences, specifically pharmaceuticals. Um, all these pharmaceutical market industry reports have a geographic and a product focus. Geographic is either a single country, a region, so either all of Africa, or looking at specific countries like Brazil, Russia, India, and China, the emerging markets, or it can be a global focus. The product focus is either a single product like insulin, a disease group like all diabetes products, or all pharmaceuticals. So after looking at these reports, um, we, are, we also repeatedly saw the more limitations that have been identified in past studies, including our study of the global insulin market, and proceeded to develop our assessment tool. So this assessment tool is called the Pharmaceutical Market and Industry Report Assessment Tool, as I affectionately call the PIRATE, ARG. Um, so, there's two, so for all pharmaceutical reports, regardless of their focus, there is an 80 point scale or 80 points and 40 criteria. For those that are specific products, so insulin, there's an additional 10 criteria and 20 possible points, so it's out of 100, um, because those we really care more about the production volume for one specific product as opposed to all pr um, pharmaceuticals. So for the content score, it's really looking at what, whether the presence of important health and market information, whether it is there or not. Um, there's a product specific 
product specific subscore, as I already said before. But what do I mean by that? So does the report include the total market volume and market value, knowing both the amount of pharmaceutical by volume and the value of it, help you calculate how much their pharmaceutical there really is in the market and whether it's enough for those people that need it? Does the report describe the prevalence and or incidence of major diseases or the disease of study? When you're looking at diabetes, you really want to know how much, how many people there are with diabetes, not only the prevalence and incidence, but the population, so that we can see whether there is enough insulin or metformin or other diabetes products are to serve that market. One of the product-specific um, criteria is, is the estimated total production or supply included? For one specific product, you really want to know how much there is. Can it serve the market that needs it? So there's only a selection of three or four from the um, 30 possible that were from the report, just kind of a little taste. Then there's also the quality score. These show whether the quality of the information, the methodologies used, the citations, whether it was really clear and it was of a high scientific quality. This was also 20 criteria out of a possible 40 points. Um, just to note, all of these were on a zero to two scale, from zero, not there, one, somewhat, two, totally there, some exceptions, but mostly that. So how do we look at quality? Are accepted scientific units used? Does it use milliliters or does it say pieces or some other random unit that we don't know what it is? Is the research methodology clear, comprehensive, and reproducible? While we don't necessarily have the resources of a market research company to find out what they did or to reproduce what they did, do we know what they did? Can we reproduce their analyses? Can we validate what they did? So I said 80 possible points. So after we developed this final draft, we conducted a pilot study of the pirate. So what's most, so we had four different market reports. The first was purchased through funding from um, Kill John Honors College. The middle two were accessed through databases available through Boston University. The final was accessed at Harvard Business School. So all the first two columns are both out of 40. The final column is out of 80. So what's most important out of this is what's the highest and what they are in relation to the 40. So look in the first column, Business Modern International's report had the highest content score. This means it had the most information that we were desired. Um, but still looking at these numbers, 27 and a half out of a possible 40. It's really not that great. It's less than 75% of the information. If you want to look at the quality, the highest was Colorama Informations, which was 26 out of a possible 40. None of the others made even 50% of the possible information, which is very questionable when you're trying to base studies off of this as even one part of your data sources. And looking at the total score, Colorama Information um, also had the highest, 47 and a half out of a possible 80, which is still amazingly low. But these these big scores mean very little unless you look at the specific criteria that developed them, especially as this is such an early draft. Um, so if you're looking at the pilot of the pirate, um, th I took out five different criteria to see what were specifically low and one that was a little bit high, but it's very misleading. If you look at the first one, does the report describe the prevalence and or incident of the major diseases? Two of them had very little epidemiological information at all. When you want to know the demand of the, in the population, whether there's a huge diabetes population that needs insulin, you really need to know that, or it's just a pretty much made up number of what consumers need. Um, and the two reports had some information there as well. Um, so there's needs a lot more epidemiological and health information specifically for reports on pharmaceutical markets. If you continue to the mar total market volume, while market values were there a little bit more, the money, since the pr type price of the product can vary between low-income countries and high-income countries, and just depending on location and provider, CVS has different prices than directly from the pharmaceutical company, um, the value means a lot less than the volume. So you really need to know how many milliliters, how many kilograms, how many tons of X product there is, where only one of these reports had that. But if you look at from that line to the bottom line, I'll put, put, put those together, are accepted scientific units used. The one report that had any information on the volume used pieces of insulin as a unit. Didn't define pieces, couldn't really do anything from that. So if you're going to have, and those that didn't have it, you may use great units for everything else, but there's no volume information. So from these reports, we really couldn't make any estimation of clinical need or really figure out whether there was enough for the population of need. Um, also, as you can see, many resources weren't clearly, sources weren't clearly cited throughout. Um, so if you were looking at a table, it might have said, oh, we talked to these companies, but it wasn't really enough to go back and validate any of their information. And the research methodologies were very, very vague. Some of them would say general steps of who they might have contacted, but you really couldn't validate any of these, a lot of the information. So these can be used as a great complementary resource, but not necessarily on their own for a study. You really need some validation, some additional market information, and ideally talk to these companies. So some conclusions from this project. First, as I mentioned earlier, there's a broad range of resources that you can use to study access to medicines from a pharmaceutical perspective or from any perspective. Um, all these resources identified are valuable, have strengths and limitations, but they can be used. 
pharmaceutical market industry reports specifically, they could be used as a complementary source, and they do have limitations, but we are starting to figure out where our gaps are in information and what we can do to address this. Hopefully, the, with the use of Pirate, we've seen it's a feasible method. We can update it in the future, include more other um, important resources. So we didn't talk about public and private sector um, prices and, 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 and I can't speak today. So um, differentiating private and public sector information, which is particularly important in low and middle income countries, where a lot of the data is provided, a lot of the medicines are provided by low, um, the government. So that could be something to update this. But as we can see from these, this past, it's a feasible method to address the quality and see whether these reports really have what you need. And finally, we've seen that studying access to medicines from a pharmaceutical market perspective has the potential to identify market interventions and health policies to promote access to affordable medicines. For using these methods, you can really find out more about what the market is, identify what the problems are, identify what barriers there are to make medicines more accessible, and hopefully develop policies to make access to medicines a reality. Thank you. We have about two minutes if there are any questions. Yes. Okay, so um, using the pirate tool, mm -hmm. once you sort of get a better idea of what these industry reports are missing, um, I know it's sort of like more of a gauge on the market, but do you think there's a way to use tools like pirate to encourage the industry itself and like the industry leaders to publish more of that mm -hmm. information? Like how can you connect like this tool mm -hmm. to the actual publication of the reports themselves? So ideally the pharmaceutical, like, so most of these reports are published by market intelligence companies that specifically research, either just do all, look at all markets or specifically health and life sciences. So ideally these report, these companies will look at these reports and the criteria that we're really requesting and A, be more transparent in how they're doing the research and B, include some more of this information. But since these reports are sold for thousands of dollars a piece. It's not necessarily the most realistic, um, but ideally they'd include more. Um, I think the most practical for this is help for, or for currently what we have now is for public health professionals to look at the quality of information and see what gaps there are, what's not there, what A, they need to find out from other sources, and B, just what the weaknesses and limitations of their studies would be using this. Yep. So you said most of your, um, your points were either on a zero, one, or two scale, except some of them were not. Mm -hmm. So so I included some half points just to make it a little bit more fluid for so if for some reports in most of it they were there but there was a couple resources in some, some places that they didn't have like either correct units or very little epidemiological information so I left it in the methodology that you could include some half points but you have to include notes I didn't put that in, in the presentation as much because it would be a little bit more confusing um, but there's also some certain criteria where zero no one yes doesn't make sense um, so it, but there's 50 criteria so off the top of my head I can't remember the specific detail thank you